welcome back to our lesson number four under peer teaching and media practicals. And the topic for this uh, uh, lesson is educational media. Now, this educational media, what am I expecting you to, to get uh, by the end of the lesson? What is your take home? So let's look at the expected uh, learning outcomes. So by the end of the, this lesson, I am expecting you to, to be able to define the term educational media. I'm also expecting you to be able to explain the general purpose of using educational media for instruction. Number three, can you, you uh, categorize educational media after the lesson? Number four, give examples of different uh, types of educational media. Number five, state guidelines that a teacher should follow for selection of educational media. And the last one, explain the role and uh, significance of educational media in teaching. Uh, let's start by defining this term educational media uh, and before we define it educational media can also be referred to as instructional media now educational media it will refer to those materials specimens apparatus software hardware and equipment used in teaching and learning in and out of school and at all levels. Uh, this definition uh, is uh, from uh, Russell in 1995. Russell is uh, an expert in educational media and um, they wrote uh, their second edition of a book with um, some colleagues like uh, Molenda in 1995. And uh, like we said, educational media can also be referred to as instructional media, media that you use for instructional purposes in the class, media that can be used for teaching and learning. Uh, now let's uh, look at the purpose. What is the purpose of um, educational media in a teaching learning uh, situation? So educational media, it provides the richest possible learning environment to help the teacher and the learners to achieve specified objectives. Educational media assists uh, the teacher to communicate more effectively. <laughs> Educational media offers an opportunity for students to participate. Educational media helps the students to learn more meaningfully and uh, permanently, in other words, they are able to retain what they have learned much longer, even after the lesson. Educational media promotes a greater understanding of uh, complex concepts by stimulating several senses uh, simultaneously. Educational media helps a teacher to cater for the individual differences among the students. And therefore, we can see educational media are very, very useful in any teaching and uh, learning uh, situation. But um, we would like now to look at the origin of this um, instructional media. It is not something that uh, is a 21st century invention. So if we look at the uh, historical roots of uh, instructional media, uh, we confine ourselves to just two proverbs, one from Africa and uh, one from the Asian continent. Uh, let's start with um, an example of uh, the Igbo proverb. The Igbo is a community in uh, eastern Nigeria. Uh, perhaps some of you have read a book by the title Things uh, Fall Apart, written by Chinua Achebe was one of the first uh, African uh, novel writers. 
he wrote uh, that uh, novel in the 1950s. Anyway, we are saying uh, the Igbo are a community in eastern Nigeria, and this is the proverb they have. It goes like, what I am told, I forget. What I see, I remember. And what I do builds a castle in my mind. You know, a castle is like a state house in my mind. That is the Igbo, uh, Igbo proverb. Then we move over for thousands of uh, kilometers into Asia where we come to the Chinese. And the Chinese uh, proverb goes like, what I hear, I forget. When I see, I remember, memory. And what I do, I understand. Now if you look at the two uh, proverbs, is there any difference? They are almost identical. But when you think of where Nigeria is and where China is, they are thousands of kilometers apart. Yet they have a common saying. So what can we get from this saying? They have a common denominator. That students learn more effectively when they are provided with adequate materials for them to observe and to use in carrying out relevant activities. This uh, keyword, understanding, that they are able to understand when they do something, when they carry out an activity, when they participate. You cannot participate or carry out an activity or an experiment in a vacuum. You need materials. These materials are what we defined uh, to earlier as media. Materials, specimens, hardware, software, equipment, tools. They need those to be able to carry out experiments to be able to carry out activities. Now, uh, the next thing we would like to consider is there are so many types of educational media that you as a teacher can use in the class. What are some of these uh, materials? Let's start with the commonest, printed uh, media or printed materials. And the examples we have, anything that's uh, written on paper, on manila, on canvas, on plastic sheets, is uh, uh, classified as uh, printed uh, media. Uh, the most common are the textbooks, teacher's guides, brochures, bulletins, flyers, comics. Perhaps I could ask you, what is a comic? Uh, some of you may remember in your uh, secondary school life, uh, comics were very common and very popular. And these are stories that are told in pictorial form. Um, those of you who read their papers on uh, the Saturday uh, papers like uh, The Nation, The Standard and so on, they have a, a pullout or a comic. Some of uh, the titles are Shuja and so on. A story told in pictorial form is what uh, we refer to as a comic. It falls under the category of print materials. Uh, the second uh, category are specimens. In this uh, category, we have um, live and uh, preserved animals and plants. Uh, they are very, very useful, especially in uh, biology and agriculture. Perhaps you would like to look at uh, an example of a specimen. Uh, this is a flower. Not a very uh, usual, is an unusual flower, but a flower, all the same, from the bottle brush uh, plant. <coughs> then in the biology class, sometimes the teacher may want to talk about uh, simple and uh, compound uh, leaves as a specimen. A simple leaf, compound uh, leaf. Those are examples of uh, specimens. The, these are lives as specimens. You also have the ones that are preserved the ones you may obtain uh, apart from a herbarium or a museum, they are preserved. Then we come to the next uh, category is uh, realia, coming from the word real. These are objects uh, from our real life that uh, can be touched, they can be smelled, they can be seen, they can be tested. Then we have uh, equipment. 
very, very useful in uh, science and applied science uh, subjects. For example, a centrifuge, very useful in biology and uh, chemistry. Knapsack uh, sprayer in agriculture that you use for uh, spraying uh, pesticides on uh, crops. You have a generator, alternating current uh, generator that's uh, very common in uh, uh, physics classes. A wheelbarrow in agriculture, a microscope in uh, biology. Then you have the tools. Pair of scissors qualifies as a tool, pair of pliers, a chisel, screwdriver, wood plane for making a wood uh, smooth, a claw hammer that has a, on the top of the hammer head a claw that is used for removing nails or uh, in fencing tightening a barbed wire uh, fence. Then we have the apparatus. And again, uh, like you said, these are very common, uh, commonly used in uh, science uh, laboratories. For example, a thermometer, a syringe, a beehive shelf, you have a lactometer, the stethoscope, a voltmeter, a meter, calipers, the micrometer, screw gauge, buns and banners. These are classified as apparatus under educational media. Then we have the reagents that are used in, uh, in agriculture. They are used in biology, chemistry, physics, and so on. And uh, examples are the solvents that we use, solutes, things like carbonates. We have oxides, we have acids, alkalis, salts, catalysts, etc. Those are classified as uh, reagents under educational media. Then we have uh, audio materials. Those materials that uh, produce uh, sound or sound signals are classified as audio. For example, we have a radio, a CD recorder or player, a piano, a guitar, a violin, a trumpet, even a whistle is uh, considered as an uh, audio media. Then we have a uh, visual media. This is a media that uh, stimulates the sense of sight, and the most common and popular ones are the videos, those movies that uh, people watch, films, overhead transparencies that are used uh, with the overhead projector, a television set, and television programs, they fall under visual media, stimulating the sense of sight. Then we have the audiovisual, the ones that combine uh, both audio and uh, visual components in the material such as a television program. You can see the pictures and you can hear the sound, audio visual. Then we have um, the emerging uh, media like the electronic uh, media. A very good example are the computers, the USB uh, flash disks, CDs, DVDs, are examples of uh, electronic uh, media. Then uh, we have the graphics. Under graphics, we have the photographs, we have drawings, we have diagrams, we have graphs, pie charts, posters, charts, cartoons. Those are classified as uh, graphics. I did mention drawings and diagrams. What is the difference between the two? I'm sure you have interacted with drawings, you have interacted with diagrams. Are they one and the same thing? No. For the drawings, if I take in a biology lesson uh, this leaf, the way it appears, and I draw what I can see, that qualifies to be a drawing. A diagram is from memory. You see many diagrams in uh, uh, textbooks. Those are not specimens from which you are drawing as you observe. That's the difference. Then we have another category of uh, posters and charts. Again, if I may ask you, what is the difference between a poster and a chart? They are very, very similar, but they are also different. A chart, like the teacher-made uh, charts or the commercially acquired uh, charts, like the ones you see in many um, classrooms, geography, uh, charts in geography, charts in biology that show different body systems, they contain a lot of information, a lot of details. 
we can also have a teacher made uh, chart that uh, the teacher includes uh, so many details. You may have a chart on um, a flower and the parts of a flower. A lot of details. But for the poster, a poster contains one main uh, picture or drawing and one main message. You have seen many of these uh, posters on the highways and they contain one picture, one main message. That's the difference. Cartoons are messages that are conveyed or communicated in an amusing way. I'm sure you have seen in the papers a lot of cartoons and uh, they cause a lot of amusement but at the same time they convey a message. Then other media, models. Now in uh, teaching and learning, uh, when you use the word uh, uh, or the term model, these are not the models you see on the catwalk. No, these are different. And we consider a model as a simplified uh, representation of a real object, idea or, the, or a situation. It helps us to understand uh, that object or that concept or that uh, situation better, more easily and faster. Uh, for example, in uh, the biology classes, eh, we have a model of the mammalian heart, we have a model of the skeleton, human uh, skeleton or animal skeletons, we have a model of the eye, we can have a model of the ear, the globe in uh, geography is a model that uh, represents the earth, we can also have a, a model that uh, represents uh, the system's approach. All those are different uh, models. They help us to understand a message better, faster, uh, more easily. Uh, models are very common, uh, especially in the science classes and applied science uh, classes. Um, they are also very common in um, uh, health uh, facilities like uh, hospitals and uh, dispensaries. Uh, for example, uh, I can see some of you are uh, wearing uh, glasses and I believe you must have um, at one time visited uh, an eye specialist whom we call ophthalmologist, not ophthalmologist, not optician. Uh, perhaps some of us make a mistake of uh, going to an optician when we have an eye problem. An optician is not qualified to handle eye problems. An optician is like, um, like a, a chemist who dispenses medicines following a prescription. So an ophthalmologist is the, the specialist who deals with eye problems. When they examine you, they will recommend a medication or they may recommend glasses. Then they will go to the optician with that uh, prescription that specifies the kind of glasses that uh, you should uh, fit. So don't confuse the two. So many times when you go to an ophthalmologist, they have a model of the eye. This model, they are able to uh, dismantle and then they are able to illustrate or show you the problem that you have is between the lens, is between the lens and the retina or is in the vitreous humor, or the islands itself, and so on. It makes you, as a patient, understand what problem you have. You go to an ENT specialist. Those are uh, special uh, doctors who deal with um, the ear, nose, and the throat uh, problems. They may have a model of the ear, and they will uh, show you on the table that this is the pinna or the earlobe, this is the ear canal, this is the eardrum, this is the other component, this is the nerve, and uh, at that point they'll be able to show you exactly where your problem uh, is. So the model helps you, uh, even as a patient, to understand the problem that you may have in the organ that is uh, uh, giving you a problem. Then we come to the other uh, category of uh, media. These are the community resources. And like the term uh, community, this is not in the school compound. So community resources are those facilities and objects that are found within the catchment area of our school 
and its environs, and they can be used for instructional purposes. For example, you may have, if you come for, from um, an area where the local farmers uh, keep uh, livestock, most likely you are likely to get a cattle dip. This is where they take the animals um, for pesticides to be sprayed or where the animals are dipped. They get into a pool where the animal is submerged and as it moves out, then the pesticide was spread all over the skin from the, from the head to the tail and therefore it will be able to kill all those uh, pests. A game park. A game park is a community resource and uh, some of, uh, most of the game parks that we have in our country, they contain uh, both uh, fauna and uh, flora. So you can see a lot of animals, a lot of uh, plants. You can learn about uh, food chains, food webs, how those animals and uh, plants uh, relate to one another. You can also learn about um, an ecosystem uh, within the, those game parks. Then the museums. Our museums, uh, they contain both um, uh, live and uh, preserved uh, specimens. Uh, some of the museums have an attached uh, snake park, where if you take your students there, they can learn about uh, reptiles, as they also get scared. Uh, uh, one time we took uh, students to a snake park, and um, the following day, uh, most of them were, appeared uh, sleeping in the class. And the question was, why um, are you uh, so sleepy this morning? And they said, uh, from our yesterday's visit in the snake park, we had uh, dreams about the snakes, very scaring indeed. Factories that are around uh, the catchment area of the school. They can also uh, be considered as uh, community resources. The students uh, can learn uh, what happens in the factory and they can be able to see where chemistry or physics is applied. Then you have the agricultural research uh, stations uh, that uh, these days are known as uh, Kenya Agricultural and uh, Livestock uh, Research Organizations. Um, they deal with uh, plant and animal breeding and uh, students of agriculture can learn a lot of things when they visit uh, those community resources. Then uh, let's look at um, when a teacher wants to use uh, educational media, what guides the teacher? So let's look at uh, the principles guiding the selection of educational media. The first one is appropriateness for the intended purpose or the objective. What do you want to use that media or medium for? Is it appropriate for your lesson, for your topic? Two, is it suitable to the target audience? In this case, you consider the age of the, the students, their mental ability, what class are they in, what background do they have, what is their entry behavior, what are the syllabus requirements, and do you have a special needs students in your class? So for you to be able to decide about the suitability, those are some of the considerations as a teacher that you have to make. Then uh, the third uh, consideration or principle is uh, the information contained in the medium. If it is a chart, if it's a DVD, it should be accurate, that information, the facts contained uh, therein should be accurate and up to date. Then uh, the physical qualities of the material, such as the design, the simplicity. Is it easy to operate or is it difficult? Is it durable? What about quality of uh, performance of that equipment? For example, a television set, a DVD player, a computer, how does it perform? That's something you have to consider as you select. And then uh, finally the cost. Is that medium I have uh, decided to pick? Is it too expensive? Is it affordable? Is it cost effective? Then uh, we come to the reasons why we are stressing that 
a teacher should use educational media. So what is the role and uh, significance of educational media uh, for instructional purposes? The first one, arousing curiosity and uh, creating interest in a lesson. Remember we mentioned in, uh, we have mentioned in an earlier lesson about uh, set induction in micro-teaching, where you try to create interest to gain the student's attention. This can very easily be done if you are using educational media, arousing curiosity. Secondly, educational media motivates uh, learners. Anytime you are showing a video, you capture everybody's attention. Anytime you take them to a game park, the students uh, are highly motivated. Uh, like I have noticed even in my classes, whenever we are going out uh, for, for an educational visit, Nobody is uh, late, nobody misses the lesson. I find the students are there by 6 a.m. Why? They are highly motivated because of the educational visit. So educational media helps to sustain attention throughout the lesson. They also help me as a teacher to clarify concepts and information. They provide a stimulus variation and this one helps <coughs> to overcome the boredom and the monotony of the same uh, class teacher in the same class. Uh, remember we mentioned uh, stimulus variation in uh, micro teaching and using uh, media was one of uh, the examples of uh, achieving a stimulus variation. Then making uh, teaching standardized. Uh, by this we mean that in uh, radio lessons we can get uh, experts to come and uh, present and then when that is uh, recorded, that lecture by an expert, it can be shared uh, through the school broadcast uh, program or it can be recorded in other formats and circulated uh, to the teachers and the students uh, countrywide. Then uh, supplementing the spoken word. <coughs> that um, instead of uh, uh, laboring to explain a point uh, verbally for so long, you can be able to use uh, educational media in form of materials, realia, models, specimens, and so on. Uh, in addition, educational media helps to cater for the individual differences among the learners. If you have an activity and you have uh, provided materials, a slow learner will move at their own pace. A fast learner will move at their own pace, and finally each one of them will be able to achieve the objective, but they take their own time. This can only be done if you have enough materials, and that's where educational media comes in. Then we have um, uh, stimulating a discussion. When you have a video, when you have a radio, and you are listening to a program, that will stimulate discussion uh, when it comes to the end. They also add uh, reality to teaching and learning. Instead of talking in theories, you can have your specimens like the ones we had, and uh, they make a big change from theory now to practical things. And uh, educational media also helps to summarize information or narratives. You can be able to summarize a lot of information if you are using educational media. And then uh, another big advantage here, you can uh, present dangerous uh, specimens and experiences. For example, very poisonous snakes, an erupting volcano, what happens in the deep sea, you can be able to bring that into the safety of the classroom by using a screen. Um, and the last one, educational media helps a student to remember much more. So the retention of information is uh, promoted, the memory of uh, things learned is enhanced. And that uh, brings us an end, uh, uh, lesson to an end. Uh, but before we close uh, the lesson, uh, let's look at uh, what we have learned in this uh, lesson. The first one is we discussed the term educational media. What does educational media entail? What does it involve? What is the purpose of incorporating um, educational media for instruction? What purpose does media serve? We also looked at uh, types of educational media. Uh, you may recall the print media, visual media, audio media, electronic media, and so on. 
Then we have, uh, we looked at the examples of educational media under each category. For example, print media, we had the textbooks, the comics, the flyers, bulletins, and so on. We looked at uh, visual media, DVDs, the television, overhead transparencies, and so on. Then we also looked at the principles that guide the selection of educational media. For example, appropriateness of the, the medium, suitability for the age, and so on. And uh, finally, we also looked at the role and significance of educational media in instruction. And the bottom line uh, uh, from me to you is, in your teaching, can you use the multimedia approach for greater effectiveness in your teaching? And uh, before we wind up, uh, we have one assignment for you. This assignment, uh, we have a statement. And the statement is, uh, just as a lower primary uh, school classroom cannot do without a chalkboard or a whiteboard and chalk or a marker, uh, marker pens uh, in the case of the whiteboard, a secondary school teacher cannot teach effectively without educational media. Justify this statement. That is your uh, takeaway assignment uh, for this lesson. And uh, I'm sure you are going to do this assignment before we meet uh, next time. Thank you. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then, email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.